Come on in. Don't be shy. Now I understand you're looking for a new matchmaker, is that right? Mm, the last one didn't work out. That's a shame, but that's all right. Not, not all matchmakers are, are made for everyone. Sometimes you need a matchmaker just to find a matchmaker. Well, I'm glad that you decided to give me a call and come on by. Sit down, make yourself comfortable. My name is Sharon, and I'm a matchmaker. I'm very good at what I do, and I try to do things a little bit different. I work with people from all over the community, different spectrums, people who are very orthodox and people who are secular, and I just want to find the right match for you, so... Okay, now I can tell you're a little bit nervous, and that's okay. It's okay. People get nervous about these things, you know? Meeting a new matchmaker. Is the matchmaker going to be helpful? And if she's helpful and she finds some dates, are those dates going to go well? Now, before we even begin, I want us to just relax, take a moment. So I want you to look at me and we're going to take a deep breath in and breathe out. That's very nice. Let's do another deep breath in and breathe out. All right, now I believe in the power of three, so let's do one more, okay? Deep breath in and breathe out. Do you like those little flutter hands? I think they're nice. They help you relax. Just sit there. Let me do the flutter hands. Now, we're going to get the rest of our senses. I'm going to spray the room. I'm going to spray around you. This is a very nice scent. It's a mix of different scents and it's going to help you relax. So just close your eyes and I'm just going to spray this, okay? If I open it first. So I'm just spraying it around me a little bit. And now I'm going to spray it around you. Just get your little clothes a little bit. Don't worry, it doesn't stain the clothes. All right. And now finally, I've got this, um, this high necklace. You can see it stops spinning. It says high. It's high, you know, like life. And so I just want you to watch this as it dangles back and forth. Watch it as it dangles back and forth. You're going to find yourself getting relaxed. Your eyes are starting to feel heavy. No, I'm not going to hypnotize you. This is just relaxing you. Getting your circadian rhythm in sync with itself. It's giving you something to focus on in the present so you're not scatterbrained. We don't need a scatterbrain right now, okay? We're gonna focus on love and we're not gonna be nervous about it. And just keep watching, keep watching. Okay, now we're gonna stop it. Then you're just gonna take a look at it, okay? It's right there. Just stare at it. Just stare at it. Don't mind what I'm doing. I'm just taking a look at you, looking into those eyes. The eyes are windows into the soul. That's actually true. Just keep looking. Okay, I see. I see now. Okay. You're a sensitive soul. I can tell that, um... You're very smart, yeah. 
I can tell that you're smart, you're sensitive and sensible. Like that book, Sense and Sensibility, it's good to have both. So before I show you some of the, the matches I have in mind, I did read over um, your file, I read about your family, but um, why don't you tell me a little bit more about yourself? Just tell me some of your interests. Um, I, I want you to reiterate what was in your file in case there's any inconsistencies. I understand uh, you might be secular. So just tell me your background, your interests and what you're looking for, okay? I'm here to listen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a very interesting interest there. Mm -hmm. That's quite unique. Mm, that sounds fun. Okay. And you say you're not picky, you know what though? A lot of people say they're not picky, but when it comes time around, they end up being a little bit picky. And that's okay though, that's why there's a matchmaker, you know? If love were that easy, we wouldn't need matchmakers. <sighs> okay, you ever see Fiddler on the Roof? That matchmaker song, matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match? Well, let's see if I can find you a fine and catch you a catch. Now, I've got some cards here. Now, they're gonna look like baseball cards to you, but they're not baseball cards, okay? I'm just, I'm not quite as traditional as some of the other matchmakers. I like to have these cards. I think it's easier to go through. It has just the basic profile, the stats, uh, information about their background, if they're looking for someone orthodox, or conservative, reform, secular, um, what their interests are, the, the family, where they're from. So um, I just think it's easier to have them look like baseball cards, okay? And I know, they look like Mets baseball cards. If you're not a Mets fan, don't hold that against me. These are not Mets baseball cards, okay? These are matchmaker cards and the trademark. I'm the only matchmaker that has this method and I think it works quite well. Now, I have, let's see, one, two, three, I have five that I picked out when I was looking over your profile. Oh, you got some hair on your face, dear. Okay, okay. Um, and after you told me what you told me, I think these are still the best five to look at. Now, we're gonna go through all of them, but I do believe in a little bit of luck, a little bit of divine intervention. So I'm gonna hold these up and you're gonna pick one. Okay, just, just pick one. Okay, we well pick this one here. All right, so that one's gonna go first. And now we've got a few more. I want you to pick another. Okay, and this one's gonna go last. So last, first. Okay. Okay, so. The first one we're gonna start with here is Benjamin. This is Benjamin. Um, he's pretty in shape, pretty handsome. Now he's athletic and that, um, I am concerned because you said, um, you know, you like to exercise a little bit, but you're not a big health nut. You're not into hiking and um, being too outdoorsy. You're a little bit more of a city gal. So um, he could be an option, but that is one thing that could have some conflict. But you know what? It's not all about um, the activities you like to do. Now, of course, you have to have something in common. Otherwise, you're never going to spend time together. But, um, you know, it's like it's more about character and your, your core values. If one of you likes to play baseball, 
The other one likes to read books on the beach, but you have the same core values and you have some other activities that you can do together. It's not the end of the world if one plays baseball and the other reads. Okay, so um, this guy is um, actually reform, but I think reform and secular, they go hand in hand, you know. They go to the synagogue, but they're, um, it's a very relaxed feel. It's a very relaxed observant of the Torah. Um, so he could be an option. Mm. He has a nice family too, um, a little bit small. That's not a good or bad thing. I'm just saying, you know, there's a lot of big families in this neighborhood. He's a little bit on the small side. Don't let any of the talk get to you, okay? People talk about anything. They talk about families being too small. They talk about families not being from here. And that's just, it's hogwash, honestly. Hogwash. Okay, what else can I tell you about um, Benjamin here? Besides being sportsy and outdoorsy, um, it's kind of his big thing. And he likes video games. Do you like video games? You didn't mention that. Indifferent. Oh, you like to watch them. Mm, yes. That can be fun, actually. If you have a partner that likes to play video games, you can sit and watch them play the video games. Video games these days have just gotten really, uh, complex and intricate, you know? They have these, like, complex stories, great graphics. There's a whole story you could watch while you watch a boo play. Okay, but I'm not sure about Benjamin. I'm gonna, at the end of this, I'm gonna suggest everything in order. I'm gonna pick who I think would be the best match for you, absolutely. We'll start with him, but we're gonna have an order, so in case that date doesn't go well, you have a backup, you have another backup, another backup. This is why my method works very well, and why I, I say I'm the best matchmaker in town. Okay, well, this was a funny order, but you wouldn't believe it. His name is Benjamin as well. Different Benjamin entirely, okay? A very different Benjamin. The first Benjamin was a sportsy, outdoorsy guy. This Benjamin, a librarian. Isn't that adorable? Isn't that sweet? A librarian. He's got a master's in the library sciences or whatever. Everyone thinks being a librarian is easy, but uh, apparently it's not. You gotta have like a master's degree. I mean, when I was in college, I I needed help using the library computer to look up articles, to write papers. We would even, like, our classes would meet with the librarian and they would go over all of it with us. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. This man is smart. The values education, values knowledge. That's a very enticing thing. I think he's a little shy and mild-mannered, but if you find a topic you can talk about, I think he opens up pretty quickly. That happened when I met with him, you know? He seems a little reserved, a little shy, and then I was asking him questions about the library sciences. Suddenly he had a lot to say about Dewey Decimal, about the, the different search engines, peer-reviewed articles. He had a lot to say, so he's a thoughtful person, very smart. I know you were saying that you're artistic, but you also value education. You have a master's yourself. It's very impressive. So, um, this Benjamin might be up there more than the other Benjamin. Now, the other Benjamin is fine. I, I wouldn't pick any of these if I didn't think they were a good catch. It's just some people are a great catch for one person and not so much a great catch for other people, and that's fine. That doesn't mean they're trash, doesn't mean they're rubbish, doesn't mean they don't deserve love. I just think that first Benjamin is like a backup of a backup, maybe of a backup, okay. So Benjamin right now might be in the running for the top, but let me go through the other ones that I picked. Um, but I'm gonna put him in the other pile of the definitely's first, okay. So we've got the definite knees and the 
the not so definitely. Okay, yeah, let's see what we got next. Um, all right, this next guy here, his name is Moisha. Now, he was raised conservative, which maybe that's his name kind of suggested. Moisha is usually more of a observant name, I would say. Well, not always though, but uh, this is Moisha and he was raised conservative. He is still religious, but he's not, um, I don't know, he, he's very open-minded. He integrates himself with different communities. Um, he likes to volunteer a lot and volunteer with different organizations. And when I spoke to him about that, he said that he really values diversity, meeting people who are different than him, very open-minded. He certainly, um, not that this happens too often, but he does not look down upon people who are secular or reform. I mean, I think a lot of people in our community don't, don't make judgments on that. Um, but he's just very open-minded, very accepting of people observing at uh, different levels. And yeah, that's what he likes about volunteering is he says he meets people he wouldn't meet otherwise, you know? If he just stayed in his community, in his little bubble, then he wouldn't meet people of different ages, ethnicities, races, uh, what do he say? Socioeconomic statuses? He sounds pretty smart too, like that Benjamin. Um, he meets uh, people of different observances, people who are Jewish, not Jewish, religious, not religious, and he says it's, it's made him a more open-minded person, a better person, and wow, I, I was really sold on what he said, I guess, because I'm, I'm really talking up Moisha. Moisha might be up there too for you, you know? I think Moisha and Benjamin are up there. Benjamin's more on the, I would say the academic side, uh, but Moisha's more on like the life education side. And I know you value education, but you also value art. And I think that with art, um, there's something about observing life and living life and learning through life and experiences. So Moisha's up there. I haven't decided yet which one would go before the other, but I'm gonna put Moisha in the definitely pile with that Benjamin that was a definitely. All right, all right, we've got two more. Okay, two more. That one's the one you picked last, so we're gonna save that one for last. Let's see. Okay, now I know. This is Avi. Now, Avi, he's a very nice boy, gentleman, very nice family. His family is well respected in the community, so I often pick him for um, when I'm meeting a new client because he's kind of just a good catch overall. But now that I've been talking to you, I'm not so sure about Avi. Um, the thing about Avi is that he runs a business, which is very impressive, very respectable, but um, I think he's going for a very traditional life path. Uh, he wants a family. He wants to get married as soon as possible. He wants to have children. I think he said at least four. Um, yeah, I think I'm just not getting the traditional vibe from you. It didn't seem like you wanted to immediately settle down for a family. I know you said you were on the fence about kids, so, um, he might be like a, a last, a backup, backup option. I would have you meet with the other Benjamin, that the Benjamin that was in the backup pile. I would have you meet with that Benjamin before Avi, you know, that Benjamin, um, you know, he still had 
some things you might have in common. Avi just has a very specific path, a very specific thing he's looking for. He's a very respectable person. I highly recommend him to people. If you did go on a date with him, he would be an absolute gentleman. I am sure that you would have a good time. I'm sure you'd even find something to talk about that you would enjoy, certainly. So I, I don't want this to reflect badly on him. Avi is very respectable, but I don't think he's right for you. So he's going to be, I think, the end of the pile, the backup, 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 okay? So I'll put him after Benjamin, the other Benjamin. Okay. Okay, last but not least, we have Levi. Now, here's something interesting about Levi, okay? Levi is an artist, and I know you're an artist too. Very exciting, I know, I know. And sometimes throughout history, Famous couples who are artists get together. Levi is a great artist. He is a poet and a photographer. And he has had some of his photography shown in exhibits. Um, very impressive. I just don't want to oversell him. And here's the reason why. Nothing against him. I just find sometimes, because I've been doing this for years, I've seen the way matches are made, I've noticed, honestly, a lot of times too artists, it's just too much. At first, it's very exciting. You both do art. You have a lot to talk about. You show each other your art and you think, wow, this person is so impressive. I want to show them more art. I want to impress them more. They're impressing you with their art. You have some cute dates where you do your art together. Maybe he takes photographs of you. Maybe you draw things for him. Maybe he takes you to the gallery, you know. Very nice, very nice. Um, but I find long term, it just doesn't work. I find that when you have um, a couple that has similar interests, but also some differences, that works a little bit better. Um, you know, like I said, you still have to be able to do things together. If you have nothing in common at all, it ain't gonna work out. Nothing in common, nothing you can do together, sure. But, um, you know, like when I was talking about um, Moisha and the Benjamin that I thought would be a good fit for you, you know, one of them is very educated in library sciences, the other is very worldly and open-minded and works with the people. I think those go better with an artist, an educated artist like yourself. Um, with that said though, Levi is great and I am sure if you went on a date with him, you'd have a great time. I mean, any of the men, any of the gentlemen I have here, you're gonna have a nice time. The gentlemen, they will treat you right. I just think there's some that you'll have more in common, some who will be easier to talk to, um, and um, some that are just gonna work out long term. And I think Levi will be exciting at first, but you might find that your values and, and what really matters don't line up as much. So with that said, Levi is a great option. I think he's very handsome too. Very handsome, I know. He's got pretty much the, the pretty boy honest look to him. Um, I mean, they're all pretty handsome, but I, I get it. Levi's got a cute look. Um, I'm not trying to not sell him on you. I just don't want you to get your hopes up. It's just, you know, people get excited when they hear artist and it is exciting, but you gotta value someone for what's inside, the kind of person they are, the character they have, the values they have, which is the same that I would say for you. I wouldn't want one of the gentlemen I'm talking to, I, I wouldn't wanna suggest you and sell you just on being an artist alone. You're a very bright young woman, very beautiful. You've got a lot of ideas, a personality, a sense of humor. If I just sold you on being an artist, I'd be cutting you short, okay? There's so much more to you than being an artist, as impressive as that is. 
So Levi's a good option, but I don't think he's number one. So I'm gonna look over these options again. I think I have an order, but let me just look through them one more time. go from mm, should I do the first the best one first all right dear I'm gonna tell you who I think is the number one match the one you should go on a date with first before anyone else because I think it's gonna be a great date I think there's a high chance of success and if not there's no problem because the others I have as a backup one of them is gonna be a good fit, I can tell. Now, number one, I don't know if this will surprise you or not, but I think Moisha is number one, okay? Moisha does the volunteer work. He's sensitive, he's had a lot of life experience. He's looking for someone who's open-minded. He's very open to meeting people from a different background. He's very kind, and I think as I said before, you're an educated woman, you're an artist. I think that um, you're gonna get along well with someone like this, okay? You're gonna compliment him, he's gonna compliment you. You could even learn some things from him that'll inspire your art. So I'm gonna contact Moisha and we're gonna set up a date for next week, okay? Okay, great. Now. It doesn't work out with Moisha. I say, I always say go on at least two dates, preferably three, but at least two. You know, sometimes the first date, there aren't fireworks. You just, you're a little bit nervous. You're getting to know each other. The second time you meet, you feel a little more relaxed because you've already met the person. You've already gotten a feel. You're, you're a little more comfortable. So I say we always do at least two dates unless it's absolutely terrible. I get it. Sometimes you have nothing to talk about. It's awkward. And for those ones, sure, we do one and done. But if it goes well enough, I say we do two dates and then we see how it goes. If after two dates, you're really convinced it's not the right fit, um, then I would say we would go with Benjamin, the one that works in the library sciences. Very educated. I think you'll have a lot to talk about. It'll be very um, mentally stimulating, intellectually stimulating. I think he would be a fine choice as well. If that doesn't work out, then we've got your buddy Levi, who's an artist. And as I said off the bat, you'll probably have a lot to talk about a lot in common, but I do think Moisha or Benjamin are gonna balance you out more and you're gonna balance them out more and that's why I'm recommending them first. But we do have Levi as a backup. Then we've got the other Benjamin, the one that is a little sporty, a little outdoorsy, video games. He's a good guy and I think you're gonna hit it off with either either Moisha, the other Benjamin, or Levi first, but if it didn't work out with all of them, I think you'd have a good time with him. And now I've got Avi last. I don't think we're even gonna get to Avi. I think that Avi is meant for someone who's ready to settle down and have a family, kids, the whole shebang. Um, but he is the backup, 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 because sometimes, you know, you meet someone, you get excited, it's love at first sight, and then even if you weren't sure about kids, sometimes you're like, I met this guy, he's the one that I want to have children with, he's the one. So he's a great guy and that's why he's the very last backup, just because you never know, you might hit it off and then you might have those same life goals and values. So just as a reminder, we've got Moisha, Benjamin, Levi, Benjamin, and Avi. But I'm really, really mm, 
really looking forward to you meeting Moisha. I can't wait to call his family, tell him. I think he's going to be very excited to meet you. I think you two are really going to hit it off. And I'm not trying to get your hopes up. You know, sometimes if you get all excited, you go into the first date, having all these expectations, and then of course it's not going to meet those expectations because those are a fantasy. I don't want to get you too excited, but I'm just saying I think it's going to be a nice first date. I think there's going to be a second date. I just have a sense about these things. Now, do you have any questions, dear? Oh, yes, yes, I'll check in with you. Um, you know, usually like a day or two after the first date, I check in with both parties just to make sure it's going well. And if both parties agree, I'll set up the second date. If the second date goes well, I'll set up a third. And then from there out, you two are on your own to continue to date. And then if for some reason it doesn't work out, you can always come back to me. Now, no, I do not charge up front and technically I don't charge at all, okay? If you have a match, you're not legally obligated to pay me anything. This is supposed to be a complimentary service for the community. With with that said, if there is a match, if there is a, a marriage in the future being planned, um, it is pretty normal for people, um, the, both families, to provide a tip, a very generous tip, because this is one of the ways that I make a living. Uh, but again, there's no contract you're signing, and there isn't a set price. Uh, you could always ask other families around to get an idea of what is customary to tip a matchmaker. Mm, but that, that is a good question. I know it can be weird to ask about money. Uh, that, that's how it goes. And I would say, I know you had a bad experience with your other matchmaker. It seemed like they weren't quite the right fit. Um, but I would say that's pretty customary for for most matchmakers. This is a common practice. I'm not doing anything that isn't out of the ordinary. I'm not here to take advantage of anyone. So yeah, you can ask around and, and get a sense of that. I don't set a price. And I understand, you know, people come from different backgrounds. Some people come from means and they can really offer a very generous tip some people that's just not possible and um you know i don't want to withhold my services for that any question okay my dear well before you go i want to do an exercise with you we're gonna spray the room again spray around you We're just, you know, I think now you're excited, which is a good thing, but I want you to relax. And relaxing is gonna help with those expectations. You won't feel too excited and have too much of a an expectation for the day, although I'm excited too. Okay, so close your eyes, dear. Spraying it around you, spraying it around you. Just breathe in naturally and you'll get that scent, that relaxing scent. I'm gonna spray myself. I'm gonna spray your clothing so that you can carry that scent with you as you're on your way home. Now we're gonna, let's see. Now there's something I have I wanna give you. It's an evil eye necklace. Um, the thing is, you're a very successful woman, you're very bright, you're very talented, and I think that can um, attract a lot of jealousy, and so an evil eye can protect you. So I'm going to give you this, my dear. It's just, um, you know, an amulet to help protect against jealousy. So here you go. Oh, you're quite welcome. Now I just... I like to give things to people when I just, I get a sense, okay. Now before you go, let's do another breathing exercise. We'll do a few more deep breaths and then I'll let you go. I'm going to find a time for you and Moisha to meet up and um, we'll schedule that time, okay?
Okay, dear. Thank you for coming in. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad to hear this was already a better experience for you than the other matchmaker. You know, it's no no shade or anything. Different matchmakers are a fit for different people. So I'm glad we're a good match too. Okay, let's take a deep breath in. And breathe out. Let's take another deep breath in. And breathe out. And let's do one more. Actually, let's do two more. Deep breath in. Breathe out. Final one, and then you're on your way, and we'll be in touch. Deep breath in. Breathe out. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you enjoyed this and this character, Sharon, that I like to play every now and then. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, please comment, and please subscribe to my channel. And as always, Todaraba, Laila Tov. Thank you very much and good night.